Well, hey everybody, it's Chris with Live at Five. I am Chris Wataco. I am your host, and uh, I am so thankful to be able to come to you again another Sunday night in Live at Five. Uh, hey, put in the chat where you're from, even if you're watching this on a rerun. We'd love to still know where you are watching from. And please, if you would, share this video uh, with other people because, you know, we don't have a big advertising budget, so we really need uh, people to share it with their friends. And uh, and I'm so thankful uh, to, to have you do that. Um, also, if you are a... Um, get a chance please subscribe to my channel Chris Wataku um, and uh, you'll see my name you can just type it in and you'll find me and I uh, would love to have that support as well so I've got a question um, I, I I love thermoses now this is what this is the my favorite brand of thermos this is called Contigo and I love this thermos but it is majorly flawed okay so here are some of the issues. Um, at some point in time, uh, this little rubber ring, which is not there right now, wears out and you cannot fix it to save your life, okay? Um, also, uh, I have a tendency to drop this a lot and as a result, um, it gets banged up right here. And so when you attempt to set it up um, straight, it wobbles and falls over, which happened like nine times in one day uh, a few days ago. Also, the handle, which I love, eventually starts to uh, wiggle and sometimes it falls off. Um, you know, it, it, it is what it is, but I love this thermos and this brand and I continue to buy new ones because I love it. Um, probably mainly because I love the easy open and uh, when the seal's working, nothing leaks out of it. You can toss it around in your car, your purse, your handbag, and you can hang it on things. I hang it on my backpack. I absolutely love it. But there does come a time when it starts to, to wear out. And uh, and so I was funny, each time I, I the thing fell over and I kept setting it back up and attempting to fix it, um, I knew as long as it stayed vertical, it wasn't gonna leak because the rubber seal had started to wear. And, uh, and so I kept stretching it out as far as I could before I had to buy another one. Um, and so I kept trying to just tighten it more and make sure it stayed vertical. But because of all the dents, it doesn't stay vertical. And so and then finally the next day, the rubber ring fell out. And when it fell out, I knew you just have to toss it. You just have to let it go. I knew it was done. But you know what? I feel like that's the same in our life very similar you know when something starts to wear out we might patch it right like an old pair of jeans you know some of us really love our jeans or love an outfit or something that you know a coat or something and I remember i bought a goose feather type coat and it had a little tear or, or some type of feathers maybe not goose but anyway uh, feathers and and i just put a piece of tape over that cut because i love that coat and i wasn't going to get rid of it um, maybe you have an old chair that you've covered. Uh, I, I found I have this wonderful footstool that I love, and instead of patching it, I just got a new cover that stretched over it, you know. Or maybe you repaint something as it starts to wear down. You just repaint it, you know, and that's what you can do. I kind of try to do that with that, that uh, Contigo mug. Um, do you have something that you love that you keep fixing? Um, you know, stretching out its life? Put that in the chat. Do you have something that you love that you keep trying to fix no matter how many times it breaks you keep or attempting to break it's starting to wear out you keep fixing that put that in the chat now when something breaks you know we might try and fix it but like maybe a glass and a picture frame or your car or even a relationship because when it's broken and it's something that you care about and you love then you're going to attempt to try to fix it if it's fixable. Um, are you a fixer upper type person? You are you one of these people that buys a, a house and and loves to turn it over, loves to do all the things that need to be done to, to flip it to then resell it, or maybe you buy stuff uh, on Facebook Marketplace or at thrift stores and you repaint it and re give it a new life. Is that the kind of person you are, um, or are you just rather buy a new one? And say the heck with that you know I'm kind of more like well, it depends on what it is you know whether I want to fix it um, over the years I have broken more coffee mugs than I can count 
And there was a period of time that I started saving them because I had this great plan that I was going to do something with them. And then finally I realized, well, that's about five years now. I don't think I'm going to do anything with them. And I think I need to let them go, right? Or maybe it is time to let it go. Like with that mug of mine, you know, at what point in time do you just give it up? You know, give it to Jesus, right? Or, you know, and let it go. At what point in time do you maybe let that relationship go, that knickknack that you love so much, or even that old beat up car, maybe that, that outfit that was like from 1982. And are you one of those people? You have like, you know, today I saw a guy walking and he had a Bill Cosby sweater on. Y'all remember those sweaters? They're beautiful sweaters, but they're like 1980s, 90s with all the vertical stripes. And I could say, I could tell like he hasn't let go of that sweater. He really likes it. I saw this chick on Facebook who was giving her opinion, her opinion of what she thought was in and what was out. And, and she kept emphasizing, this was her opinion of what styles of clothes and styles of shoes. And I'll tell you guys, I'm one of these people where... I wear what I want to wear, and by the time I get the new trend, it's usually the old trend for everybody else, because that's just kind of how I am. I don't buy when it first comes out. I wait till it's on sale. So recently, I had a situation in my family that for years, I have been trying to keep going, um, to patch, um, to fix. Um, I knew the relationship wasn't great. You know, I knew that we had both changed. And uh, we'd grown apart, and, and to be honest with you, we just kept trying because we were family. That's what families are supposed to do, right? And yet things were strained. Um, there was, it wasn't a healthy relationship, um, poor communication. And uh, due to our differences, the olive branch was starting to become brittle. Um, like that rubber ring that kind of fell out, right, uh, of, the, of the Contigo mug. So for almost 30 years, I have been trying to turn that thermos upright. For 30 years, I've been trying to patch it and just squeeze the lid on a little bit tighter. For 30 years, every time it fell over, uh, you know, I was sitting it right back up. And, but unfortunately, every time it fell over, it was causing more damage. And eventually, there's enough damage to where it's not really fixable. Now, I don't know about you, but how many times have you continued to patch or fix something? Or do you just let it go? Do you either start over or move on? You know, what about you? Well, today's message, God reminded me about the importance and the value of reconciliation related to, these, to this Contigo cup. Now, what's funny about the Contigo mug, when it kept falling over, this was on Wednesday, I was doing a single women's night at my church with my friend Michelle, and we started laughing because I literally, no matter where I put the mug, it would get kicked over. And I said, there's a sermon in here. I, there's a talk in this. And sure enough, there was a talk. And so I was praying and asking God, you know, what does this have to do with relationships? You know, because relationships do need patches sometimes. They do get worn out. There is a strain. There is problems, right? And there are times that they become broken. Friendships that didn't work quite out, you know, uh, romances. Mm, don't get me started there, right? Um, you know, people you work with, people you go to church with, and of course, family, the hardest ones of all. And so I was praying and asking God, you know, when, when do you, you know, when do you keep trying? At what point in time do you just let it go? Well, how many, how many times do you patch something? How many times do you reach out to somebody? How many times do you continue to try to bring people back together? At what point in time do you let go? Well, to be honest with you, that's when you and God, that's when you and God, for sure. I can't tell anybody when that point is, but God did give me three aspects of reconciliation that I want to share with you that I've applied in my own life. Um, the first one is you reconcile or times that you have to reconcile, you want to fix something, you want to patch it. When God is saying, listen, there's a greater good in what's going to come from this than, than the opposite. And so maybe he wants you to draw closer to that person because 
maybe God wants you to change, you know, sandpaper, you know, rub it, that person rubs it the wrong way, you know, and it makes you stronger. Or, you know, maybe you have to continue to work together and you have your job or you're serving in ministry together. And there's a greater purpose for you to reconcile because of what God wants to do. Um, I am so blessed to have a wonderful retreat team that I, you know, technically serve over, but we really serve together. And uh, it's our Labor Day Singles Retreat. It's our team, and we work on this thing all year long, not just the weekend of. But the reality is when the weekend gets here, we can get stressed. We're sleep deprived and emotionally deprived and, and uh, we might not get a meal and, and uh, we're running around or trying to minister to all these people that have come from all over the country. And sometimes you get a little stressed and sometimes you say things you shouldn't say. And, uh, and you, you can definitely hurt someone's feelings. And so we know that the goal of the enemy is to divide us. He knows your weaknesses. He knows when you're tired. He wants to come in because he would love to break our team apart. He would love to destroy our labor day retreat. So we know the goal of the enemy, but we have to remember the goal of God. I believe the labor day retreat is here for, for a long time. And I'm believing that God wants us unified. So because he wants us unified, then we have to kind of look at our differences. We have to be willing to, to work together, to look past some things, to talk things out, to talk about the things that don't work and how we can uh, maybe look at their perspective of things with the ultimate goal is to grow together. So maybe some feelings do get hurt and that needs to be reconciled. We know the goal of God is to unify us in this situation but we have to be willing to make changes in ourself. Are you willing to make changes in yourself? Are you willing to work towards the goal that, that Christ has for you in those relationships? 1 Corinthians 1.10 is a great uh, set of scripture. This is uh, Paul is speaking to the church in Corinth. And, uh, and he was talking about they were quarreling with each other. They, he'd heard through the grapevine that they were fussing. And I kind of look at that the same way because the church is the church. It's, you know, it's all believers wherever they are. And I can see easily how, you know, in our ministries, in our families, in our small groups, you know, whatever your community, uh, you can have quarreling because you're not going to always agree. I don't agree with everything my friends say. You know, and so 1 Corinthians 1 10 says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another and what you say, and that there's no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. Wow. So Paul is saying, you know, this is a desire, you know, figure it out, work together, because the goal is the same is to reach people for Christ. So you need to be looking at why you have differences the way you are. What, what's going on? We need to be unified. And so that was a pretty strong, uh, you know, comment that Paul has made. He's like, listen, it'll divide you very quickly. You've got to stop quarreling. You got to come together, even if you don't always agree. Amen? I think so. So put in the chat, have you ever reconciled with someone for the greater purpose of Christ? You know, has there been someone in your life that you wanted to get rid of, but God says, no, there's something greater here. It might have even been a good friend. It might have been someone that you married. I don't know who, who's watching this and where, but maybe you had such differences. And as a result, God had you come back together and work them out because there was a greater good involved. Now, there's another reason we may need to reconcile. There are times that we are at fault, or at least the other person thinks we're at fault, and we need forgiveness. And often our pride has kept us from saying it. This is so hard, guys, I know. It's hard to admit you're wrong, that you've messed up. By asking forgiveness, there's a chance they won't forgive you. There's that temptation to want to explain why you sinned against them, why you said what you said, why you did what you did. You know, you want to justify it somehow, you know, but you messed up and you, and, and the reality is that person has to become more important and you have to be willing. You know, again, the goal of the enemy is to divide you, but God wants you to work it out. 
Because there's something that God is doing in that relationship, in that friendship, in that family relationship that's greater than what you would do apart, which is going to lead us to when it is time to go your separate ways. But let's first talk about Matthew 23 to 26. So if you're offering your gift at the altar, and then there's you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly, I love that, quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to the court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and puts you in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you've paid the last penny. He's talking about when we're having differences with each other, and you have a tendency to want to sue somebody. You know, we're not supposed to sue our brothers and sisters in Christ. We're supposed to work it out. And so here's a situation where, you know, maybe you messed up. Or maybe you're like, I don't even know if I messed up. I don't even remember messing up. And you've said, hey, I'm sorry. If, if I've done something wrong, I please forgive me. But the reality is they may not want to forgive you. But as long as you've done what God's asked you to do, as long as you've reached out, as long as you've made an effort to reconcile, it does take two to work it out. But if God is asking you to seek forgiveness, if God is telling you to say you're sorry, even if you don't even remember what it is, do it. Do what God has asked you to do so that you can go before him and you can, you know, have that conscience clear that you've, you know, confessed any sin and asked to reconcile and asked to work things out. But know that it still is up to that other person as well. Have you been there before? Put in the chat. Have you been in those situations before and it's been very difficult? Now, there are times you reconcile and simply say, I agree to disagree. Yep. Maybe you both said, I'm sorry. You know, you've asked for forgiveness. Um, maybe you don't agree in the direction of your ministry, you know, maybe someone has come along and now they're the, the Bible study teacher or the Sunday school teacher, or even maybe your pastor at your church and, you know, whatever it might be, or you have a, you're in a business situation. Now you got a new boss and, you know, and they don't have the same direction or vision for the direction of the company, or maybe you're in a relationship and you don't have the same goals in that relationship, in that friendship, in even sometimes romantic relationships. That's why in our intentional relationship Bible study, we strongly encourage people to spend that extra time building friendships and intentional friendships, because often we find that there's a lot of different differences that we don't find out till later when you're romantically involved, your heart gets involved, and that's when you decide to just scoot those differences under the rug, and you find out later in your marriages that they're actually things that should have been dealt with and probably you might not have should have been even married. So we, you know, in that study, we strongly encourage people to spend that extra time. You know, if you're about to go into a business partnership, spend that extra time being in, in, in a compliant and in, into an agreement of the direction that God has got you going. But there are times that businesses do separate people buy up partners. There are times, unfortunately, that marriages end, friendships end, family relationships end, or I don't think you can end a family relationship, but definitely spending time with that family member, being in their life. There are times that some of you as parents have had to have love, tough love with your children, you know, where you've had to let them go and, and let them go and make the mistakes, just like the prodigal son. There are times that some of you have had to, to let go of a parent or a sibling relationship that was somewhat you felt was toxic and their behavior was toxic and it was hurting you. And you've had to say, you know what, I love this person because they're my sibling, but this relationship is not growing towards Christ. There is no goal. There is no, we're not coming together in unity because we do not agree and it's never going to be unified. So you do what Paul did as well. So Paul's telling us in one place, he's saying, hey, if you're quarreling, y'all need to work it out. And then he's saying, but you know what? There are times that you have to still love them in Christ and let them go. This is in Acts chapter 15, 36 through 41. It said, sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, 
Let's go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they're doing. I'd be like, yeah, let's go do it because that would be fun. I love, you know, I just got back from England. I love going to places that I've been before to see what they've been doing, to see how they've grown, to see if there's any changes. I was recently talking to a couple of leaders. I'm doing a retreat next weekend and they were quoting back my quotes to me and I was going, that's, that's, Either they've heard me way too many times or, or you know, I, I guess it's sinking in finally. But it is encouraging, especially if those of you who are parents, you know when your kid finally gets it, right? And you, they, you've taught them something and they get it. Well, the same thing here, you know, Paul and Barnabas, let's go back and let's see how they're growing. Let's see how their life has changed. Let's see, you know, what's happened in their relationship with the Lord. And he said, but Barnabas wanted to take John, also called, called Mark, with them. But Paul did not think it was wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not contained with them in the work. So here's a situation where they have a different relationship with John. And, um, you know, obviously maybe Barnabas was closer to John and had a higher, you know, maybe he was like, oh, it didn't bother me that he abandoned us. It doesn't bother me that he had other things he was doing. But for Paul, who spilt a little bit differently, and I would have to say I'm more like Paul, you know, I'm, I have structure. I have a, an expectation. And while I have a, lots of grace and I can extend grace, especially when you work together for a while, there are point in time when, you know, people don't follow through. They don't show up. They're inconsistent in their walk that you do need to release because it could affect the ministry. And so I don't know exactly about John, Mark. I don't, I don't know all the details and the circumstances, but whatever it was, Paul's like, no, I don't agree. I don't want him with us. And so they had such a sharp disagreement, verse 39, that they parted company. Wow, Paul, you just said, you know, don't try to quarrel, work things out. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and left and commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord. He went to Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. So the work didn't end. The work continued. They both continued to go reach people. They still had the same goal to reach people for Christ. They still had the same goal to help people grow, to get people saved. They still had the same goal to build the churches, but they had a different approach on how to do, go about it and how to build their team. And that's normal, but it didn't mean they didn't love each other in Christ. It didn't mean that they didn't support each other or respect each other. They just simply had a disagreement and had to go about it. Have you done this? Have you had to do this? Put it in the chat. Have you had situations in your life you're like, you know, I just have to let them go. I have to let them go. I have to let that situation go. I can't. There's no way, I have not found a way, and of course in Christ there's always a way, but if God has said to you, it's okay to let this go. If God has given you peace to let this relationship go, you know, if you're, on, you're not in agreement in the direction and the vision, if you're in a relationship with someone and then you realize that what they think and the expectations are totally in a different direction than you, it doesn't mean they don't love God or you don't love God. It just simply means you're not going in the same direction. And that's very important for healthy relationships. Or maybe you've witnessed to someone over and over and over and over. And finally, you're at a point to where, you know what? They're starting to pull me down. Their lack of commitment to Christ, their lack of wanting to get saved, their lack of wanting to hear anything about God and scripture is starting to wear you down. It's starting to cause an effect on you in a negative way. And you're finding yourself getting angry. That's a time to let go. Are you that person maybe that maybe is watching this and you know, you're, you're, you know, God wants you to accept him. You want salvation, but for whatever reason, you're still holding back. And people that are around you that have loved you, people are praying for you. They've reached out to you. I had a lady I met this morning at church, and she said that she was going to a denomination that she felt that just that wasn't about relationship with the Lord. She goes, I desperately wanted and hungered for God. And my husband and I started going around looking, and we found the church that we believe is speaking the truth. You need to be in a church. You need to accept Christ. You need to be growing it will make an eternal difference. And I pray if you're watching this and you don't know the Lord, all you have to do is say, you know what? I believe in Jesus. 
Jesus is the Son of God, and he died for me on the cross for my sins because I'm a sinner. I make mistakes. I'm a sinner, and I need a Savior to forgive me. He wants to forgive you. He wants you to accept his free gift of eternal life. He loves you. He has not forgotten you. He knows what you're going through. He knows the secret things. He knows the hurts and the pains. He, he knows every part of your body, everything that's ever happened to you, and everything that's ever happened to you. Won't you just give your life to him? Christians, being a Christian is not always fun. There are hard days. But having that peace of God far outweighs anything that we could do on our own. The last set of scripture is bottom line is we have to trust. There, go, there have been many times when I've had to let go and later on that person came back into my life. And, you know, I hope that some of those relationships I've let go of, that that'll happen. They've realized often that maybe they were the source of the problem and they needed some time away to see and to see clearly. And then there are times that I realized that I was the problem, you know, due to maybe my immaturity in the Lord. I couldn't see the situation. And, and you know, I'm the one that needed to go, wait a minute, I was the cause of that problem and I need to seek that person out and say, I'm sorry. You know, I've done that with some and, you know, and, and hasn't changed anything. They didn't really want me back in their life. And, and there are others, it's been the other way around where they've sought after me, but the pain was too hard and what they'd done was so difficult and I forgave them, but I wasn't quite ready to start a relationship back up. And then there were times that I did. There are times that I haven't given up. And I know my mom, she's one of those, she's in the same situation with one of her sisters where she didn't give up. She didn't give up and she saw a change in one, a big change. And so only God can tell you who to keep trying to patch. Who do you keep trying to, to fix the brokenness and the hurt that's happened between you? And who do you just let go and go buy a new Contigo cup? Proverbs 3, 5 through 8 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, right? Trust in the Lord. And do not lean on your understanding, because my understanding is going to get me in trouble. Mm. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will make your straight make straight your path. I love that. He's going to give you clear direction. So when you draw close to God, he's going to say, yes, fix this, patch this, let this go. He's going to tell you it's going to be clear. It's going to be straight. But you got to get close to him. you got to draw closer to him. For those of you watching this, and it's been a while since you've really talked to God, he wants to hear from you. He wants you to come to him. He wants to help make your path straight. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Some of you watching this are so tired. You're tired emotionally, spiritually, mentally, physically. Some of the things that you're involved in, some of the relationships you're involved in are wearing you out. And God is telling us to trust in him. Because trusting in him will heal you and restore you. Are you ready to be restored? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another time with friends and new friends. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to use this technology. Thank you that you that I get to do this and that this is not in my power, but in your power. Lord, thank you that your word is so strong. Your word is sharper uh, than your word is like a two edge sharpened sword. It pierces both sides. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you for your word and, the, and, and, and your word is our life. Your word is what gives us our strength. Your word is what gives us our direction. You are the word. Thank you for choosing us. And I pray everyone watching would choose you. And I pray those that are struggling right now that you would give them that refreshment, that you would heal those bones and you would help them to see clearly what you have before them. Giving that relationship, that situation, Give it to you and leave it at the cross. In Christ's name, amen. 
Well, in our last minute, got a few little commercials for you. This Thursday, me and Corey Nichols, if you were at our big Labor Day retreat, Corey Nichols is with Destiny Rescue, but he and I also do some things together. He's crazy. He's lots of fun. And we've been doing a series called Overcoming, uh, the Overcomer event. And so this Thursday night, live from 7 to around 7.30, and then we're going to open it up to Q&A, we're going to be talking about distractions. I mean, yeah, distractions. That wasn't that good. I could do that better. Anyway, and so we'd love for you to be there. I'm going to put in the chat the details, but you can always go to my Labor Day page. I mean, not to my, uh, the Singles Network uh, page, and you get the link there. Um, also, um, uh, coming up, uh, uh, just different uh, Zoom events that I'll be doing. Of course, I'll be here next Sunday as well. We're working on the next Labor Day retreat. We've started praying. We're started working, uh, praying about the name and the direction, what God, what happens to do. So that'll all be, you know, we'll show up in the le next month or so. We'll hopefully have some uh, some information for you there as well. Registration usually starts around the first of the year. Um, also, um, our pictures, I've loaded every picture that I could find on our Facebook page as well as on our website. And so check that out. And uh, if you've got still some photos that you haven't posted, please do that because we are so thankful for all of you guys who did that. So with that, um, I will say goodbye. You guys have a great week and I look forward to seeing you next week. And oh, one last thing. It's Missy Honeycutt's birthday. So we need to do a shout out. Happy birthday to you. And let her know how much we appreciate her. And we are thankful for her birthday. And, uh, and so anyway, till next time, guys. Bye.